Rice cultivation has two seasons per year, spring and autumn crops, and the farmer will want to ensure he has the highest yield for both crops. He can only achieve that if he makes the right choices in the different stages of rice cultivation. I am Carol Gurusami. Welcome to the Science of Rice, a special program brought to you by the Guyana Rice Development Board to help educate you on the work in progress within the rice industry. Today we focus on the preparation of seeds before broadcasting. Before you started a new crop, you have to make certain decisions in the type of seed you're using, the amount of seed that you've been using for the crop. Now, in conventional farming, you find farmers normally use 140 and above seed weight per acre. But today, with the improved practices, um, we are using 100 pound seeds per acre. And um, the reason for using 100 pound seeds per acre, it's give uh, the farmer much more advantage in the establishment and much more in the field and tillering aspect. Research has proven that farmers will reap more from using less seed rate per plot. This bag contains 140 pounds seed into it and because we only need 100 pounds, so what we will do now, we will take out 40 pounds from this exact bag here and remain 100 pounds into it. Now, <clears throat> we remain with 100 pounds here. Now, we would further divide this into two pieces. The reason for dividing it is to make it very easy for the soaking and the taking out, because most farmers now soak in the trenches or in canals. So, divide it into two pieces, make it easy to handle. Now the variety that we're using here is GRDB 10, right? Now the next stage is this, uh, we're going to soak, but uh, before we soak, we make certain that um, when we tie the mouth of the bags, not to tie too tight. So give it a little space that when it's soaked, because the paddy grain actually swell, and so if it tie too tight, it might tend not to soak properly. So you tie it a little slack as you see what they are doing here. Once the bag is securely tied, it is transferred into the soaking tank. We have done a lot of demonstrations using different seed rates. 80 pound, 100 pound, 120 pound, 140 pound, uh, 160 pound, and even higher seed rates. And in, in, in the studies where we use 80, 110 and 140 pound, what we found that the yields, the yields of the 80 pound and the, and the 140 pound was not significantly different. Meaning that the yields that you had with the 80 pound was almost similar to the yield that you had with the 140 pound. As a matter of fact, in some cases, the 80 pound, the yields with the 80 pound seed of paddy per acre yielded higher than the 140 pound. So the question is, why would you want to use 140 pound seed, that is 60 additional pound, which is costing money, when 80 pound seed can give the same results? First of all, they asked me how many acres, I said eight. I said reduce the seed rate, seed rate from, uh, he asked me how much, he said 200 pounds by maybe he said, um, well, you got to come down to like about 100, 120. So he said, man, that's stupidness to me. But I did not come down right down to the requires. I said, I decided to go at 140 pounds. And let me tell you something, farmers. 
I go ahead, do what I was told to do in terms of getting the six points right. Final, the soil test was done. Get the fertilizer which they require among the fertilizer and the right fertilizer to incorporate into the land. While I do it at the, the, the final preparation, and then you throw 140 pounds per acre. And that fairy crop, I was wondering to know what is going to transpire. You know, you dry the field out. When I dry the field out, you say, man, you got helicopter space. Because you're not accustomed to throw the amount of party like what you've showed here. So you got space. What I can tell you this, after 21 days of drying, the land dry out, we didn't incorporate the fertilizer on the dry land because we had the little up and down weather. But I shot in water. And that very crop, that very crop from six point, from 20 to 30 bags, like I jumped to 42 bags per week. I never, ever get it. It cost me less. less. Yeah, less in terms of seed rate. We use 120 pounds, which we normally use 140, 50 pounds. And in terms of seed treatment, you, you, in, in the plant like about 30 to 35 days, you don't spray. So you, there's a definitely um, less. Now, this paddy will be, be soaked now and it will remain in this water here for 24 hours. And after 24 hours, we remove it back from the water and allow it to drain about six hours. And then we continue our sea treatment after that. It is very important that farmers take good precaution about the water of which they are using. Make sure that it is not muddy and secondly, the water is not stagnant because both of these situations can lead to reduced germination percentage. After soaking and draining, the seed is then chemically treated and it is important to note that protective clothing should be worn at all times during this process. This is part of the new Six Points practice. Treating the seed has a lot of benefits. The first one is the seed or, or, or the seedlings are not being damaged by water weevil. So once you treat the seed and you sow it in the field, water weevil cannot affect it. Additionally, the young plant, as, as, it's, as it's growing, the young plant will not be affected by, by leaf miner, caterpillar, stem borer. So in so doing, you are preserving these beneficial insects and they are ladybird beetle, damselfly, dragonfly, spider. And what these benefit, the reason why we're calling them beneficial insects is that they predate on these other pests in the field. So they're the natural, they natural control. The next stage is to treat the paddy. It is important to wear protective gear at all times when treating paddy. The chemical that we are using is Reginel, but the most important is the active ingredient, which is Frippinel. Now, the Frippinel is recommended at 0.9 ml per pound of seed, with 8.1 ml of water per pound of seed, with, per pound of seed, which gives us a total of a solution of 9 ml of solution per pound of seed. A knapsack sprayer is used to mix the solution. Water is added, then the chemical, then water again to have the right solution. Shake the knapsack to ensure the solution is properly mixed. The reason
reason for adding the water into the knapsack spray, if you allow the chemical to get into it, it run into the nozzle and would not have a good mixture here. So we add water, then we would add the solution and then add the extra water to make the right solution that we wanted for the treatment. So we had to get about 600 mol ml, so we use a measuring cylinder to calibrate that now. Make certain you have to agitate the can to make sure you have a thorough mixture in the can before it starts spraying. already spread and we already do a four spring. Now we will turn the paddy up to make certain that we have some thorough mixing. And after we finish turning there now, we give it one more spray and then we spread it and cover it to allow germination to take place. Now what we are doing here, we um, don't treat the paddy. Now we make certain that the paddy have a thickness of four to six inches in depth. And now we're covering it now and to allow to a germination to take place. After 24 hours of incubation, the seeds are torn so that we do not enhance germination on the, the lower area of the seed or on the floor as against the upper or the surface area on the top of the stock. So seeds are torn and if seeds are drying out more than what it's supposed to be, a light sprinkle of water can be encouraged for good germination uh, results. However, the process of germination would normally take 24 to 48 hours. And this is all dependent on the different types of variety. When treated seeds are used, there is a better establishment of the young seedlings in the field, growing even in the corners where plants don't normally grow. There will be a uniform plant stand with no bare or blank spots in the field, and this will lead to higher yields. No pest will also be there to feed on the seedling. That is why a less seed rate is used. This reduces cost of production. Sowing or broadcasting seed paddy is a method to pay keen attention to. Germinated seeds are used and spread across the field, but it is also important to note the time of sowing. For the sowing season, for, for the autumn crop, which is, which is May, mid-May to end of June, maybe early July, if, when you sow during that period, the, the plant will flower and, and the grain will be filled during the period August, September. And those are the periods where you have the sunlight. So that's, that period of sowing or that time of sowing 
doesn't have to change. And that's, that's, you know, in this concept of time of sowing, that doesn't have to change because the farmers are doing the right thing when they're sowing during May, uh, June, and maybe early July. So that is correct for the autumn crop. In terms of the spring crop, the sowing currently takes place in November, December, end of December, maybe the first week in January. And the, when you sow during this time, the rice will flower in, in February, grain filling, and in March. Again, during those period, you will have bright sunny weather. The choice of variety is very important to farmer as well. A lot of groundwork is done by the Rice Research Station of the Guyana Rice Development Board in plant breeding. This gives farmers a wide range of quality seed paddy to choose from. We have bring a lot of parents from our, all parts of the world and cross it with, with our local varieties. And we have generated a lot of breeding lines. Maybe cu currently we have about 8,000 8, breeding lines. And every season we have to grow them in the field and look for the important traits that we're looking. So we started with, with the nursery. So this is the nursery that we are seeing. Every number here, we have seen every single stick there has represent one, one genotype, one line that has a potential to become a variety. So, so many sticks you have seen there, so many potential varieties we have developing for Guyana. Not all, certainly not all of those will become varieties, but only the better ones. <music> The improved varieties are the newer varieties, namely the GRDB 9, 10, 11, 12. From series of experimental work and seeding density studies, the seed rates for those four varieties from 80 to 100, 120 pounds gives us the best yield. And this reduced seed rate is better preferred based on the results of reduced lodging in the field higher yields obtained, and a reduced incidence of diseases. A germination test will also be done to determine how much seed will actually grow and develop into healthy seedlings. Once germination is over 85%, it is considered a high quality seed. pre germ seeds can be, can be broadcasted by three ways. It can be done manually, which is the traditional system in the poor rural communities. Uh, it can be also broadcasted by using spreaders, which are now becoming popular, and by and thirdly by aircraft, which the larger farmers or farmers with large farm holdings would use. All three methods will give you a uniform spread and establishment. However, the different there are different costs for the different method use. Determining the seed rate to use is the next step. This is important since it relates to the density of the plant population per square meter. Manual sewing is a very tedious exercise. There are many rules to be followed and adhered to. Each plot is sown with one variety. Shy men should not walk back and sow in fields because this can damage seeds. Attention should be paid to the wind direction before broadcasting. After sowing one field, the bags should be completely cleaned. In the manual sowing, it's important that each one of these bags are properly cleaned before 
another variety actually go into it because we don't want contamination, because we want to maintain the generic purity of each variety. A contact insecticide is used to help as a precautionary method to prevent pests from attacking the seedlings. Mechanical sowing is fairly a new practice in rice cultivation, but is producing the desired results in terms of even distribution of seeds. This is a new venture we um, put in place because, um, because of labor is not available at all times. So we're using the mechanical spreader on a tractor to broadcast our seed. By using this, we um, find that um, we're using a lesser seed rate and there is much more efficiency in the broadcasting of the paddy because you would not find where the laborers normally broadcast. You find lines and not even distribution. But with the mechanical um, spreader, you have an even distribution with seedling. So you can have better management at later days because the plant population will be very even field, which can avoid um, fungal infection for those uh, manual labor where the area are thick, that does harbor um, fungal um, disease. Um, the another something is that um, <clears throat> we can accomplish much more acreage on a short time basis and cover much more work. Um, in the mechanical um, spreader, we find that um, <clears throat> instead of using 140, 150 pounds, we can use up to 80 pounds per um, seed per acre. Because my um, something here at the resource station, we want to have a plant establishment about maximum 250 plants per meter square. Using this machine, we definitely can achieve that. Once sowing or broadcasting is done effectively, a farmer needs to nurture his crop as it matures, especially in its early growth. Consistent monitoring is advised since early season pests can pose a danger to the crop. In excess of 50 invertebrates are known to affect rice in Guyana. These invertebrates affect rice from planting through harvesting. In Guyana, we group them according to the stage of crop that they affect. There are three main categories. These are early season pests, which include water weevil, leaf miner, caterpillar, and snails. Mid season pests include caterpillar and stem borer. And finally, the late season pests. These are plant hopper and paddy bugs. Fertilizer application and weed control are important factors as well as the farmers continue to nurture his crop as it matures. We are um, applying our nitrogen fertilizer, which would be our first application of fertilizer, which done around 18, 21 days. And we applied the nitrogen fertilizer on dry or moist soil, as you see it in the field already, how the field is. So we're using a mechanical spreader, and uh, the rate that we're using here is 110 pounds per acre, urea. That's all for this week's program. Thanks for watching, and do join us every Tuesday at 19 hours as we continue to learn more about the science of rice.